half weeks. Uh, we're going to be doing a series of monologues. And monologue is basically a view from a character in the Bible. And uh, each week, hopefully, they'll be here at this service. I, I didn't, I don't know if they'll all be able to make it to my talk, but hopefully you'll have a different person each week reading you the part of that person from the Bible. And then um, I'll have a short sermon afterwards. Well, first week is Isaiah, and I'm not going to be Isaiah, so today the sermon and the monologue will be tied together. So it's all going to be one thing. So i got to get my Isaiah back here so I can look like a prophet for you. All right. You just do. I was going to wear the, the wig and the beard that I had for uh, for Halloween, but I'm afraid you all sit there and laugh all the time and nobody listens to the sermon, so I can do that. Yeah, yeah I know. That's a problem. You would. Uh, that's what you're going to do. We don't even know. probably why I'm at the temple. Right. But I'm a prophet. That's what Isaiah is. I'm a prophet and that's where I should be, is at the temple. Praying. Praying for my people. Praying for my city, Jerusalem. I need to pray these days. These days are hard upon us. It's been a long time since the days of glory of David and Solomon, when the world brought its wealth to Israel, and where the kings were known as men after God's own heart. You know, that was a long time ago. And now we are no longer one nation, but two. And we are divided, and the people have lost sight of God. We have kings who no longer follow God. And we have become a nation that has been attacked and beaten and downtrodden. And right now, even as we speak, there are rumors of war. Syria and Ephraim have gathered together to wage war against us. They are much stronger than we are. And they plan on overthrowing us and setting their own king up and ruling us. And so I'm in the temple praying. I'm praying that God will deliver Jerusalem. I was in that temple that day when it happened. I was doing what I normally do, praying and seeking God and asking Him to show me His will for His people. And suddenly the temple was full of smoke. From everywhere, you couldn't even see anything. And a light, brighter than anything you've ever seen, shined. And I closed my eyes and I hid it, and when I looked up, there was Yahweh, the Lord God Almighty, sitting on his throne, surrounded by seraphim and cherubim and a multitude of angels. I knew I was dead. 
No sinful man can look at God and live. I knew I was dead, and I fell to my knees, and I said, Oh my God, I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among the people of unclean lips. But he didn't strike me dead. Rather, one of the cherubim took tongs, and from the altar where the fire was always going, he took a live coal and brought it over, and he touched it to my lips. My lips didn't burn, but how my soul did. How I felt the burning of God's cleansing fire in me. And I knew that I was clean by the holiness of God. I knew that I had been cleansed by Him. As I got over my amazement, I looked back up, and there He was, surrounded by the angels, and He was talking to them. And he was talking about Ahaz and the people. And how Ahaz was no longer a king who followed him, but rather a king who brought in false gods and had made alliances with other countries that God had said not to. And he was talking to his angels and he was telling about the message he had for Ahaz. And he said, who would send it? Who are we going to give this message to? And I said, here I am. Here I am, God. Send me. Send me, God. And so Yahweh, the Almighty, gave me a message to give to Ahab. He gave me a message. And so I went down by the water's field and met him at the end of the conduit. And I told him, the message that God had for Ahaz was do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of Ephraim and Syria. Do not be afraid of those who plot against you. Do not be afraid when it seems like the odds are overwhelming. Do not be afraid for I, your God, am with you. And then Amazing thing. An absolutely, utterly amazing thing. He said to Ahab, ask any sign you want, as high as the heaven or as deep as hell itself, and I will do it. Can you imagine? To be asked anything, anything you want. You want the sun to turn purple and the sky to be yellow? God will do it. You want the grass to be bright orange and the trees to, to be multicolored? I'll do it. If you want it to rain the moon, I'll do it. Whatever you want, Aya, no matter what it is, just so you will know, I will do whatever you want just to prove to you that I am with you and you do not have to be afraid.
people of God, you and I, how often have we done the same when God has shown us his love and his forgiveness, when we have known the grace of God and the forgiveness of God, and yet when problems come, what do we do? We worry and we fret and we forget that God is with us. And when we're around others who don't believe, we pretend that we don't know him either. Maybe we don't. Like Ahab, we too, so often do not believe, do not hold really fast to the faith that makes us strong. And as God has said to Ahab, be strong in your faith or you will not be strong at all. How true that is, strong. Ahab said, I will not take it. So God, said, hey, yes, I will then give you a sign, since you will not choose one, I will give you a sign that is even greater than all of the heaven or all the way down to hell. I will give you a sign that is greater than you can even imagine, for I will give you myself. I will come, and I will be with my people. For behold, a virgin shall bear a child, and he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And God did. God destroyed the the Syrians and the Ephraimites or the Syrians. They came down. The Syrians came down and wiped out the Syrians. Tough names to say. And the Ephraimites was in two years. They never attacked Judah. They never were able to. God did what He said. But then God waited six hundred years before he himself came. How I long to see that day when God would come and be with his people. How many of us prophets have waited for years and years and hungered to see that, but we did not. We never got to see God among his people, but you have seen him. You have seen how he cared for the lonely, the empty, the poor, how he healed the sick and reached out and mended broken lives and broken hearts. You saw how this God came born in a manger, humbled himself just to be with us, this creator of the universe. How this God cared for us, allowed himself to be killed, and died for us on the cross. It's God who cared enough to pay the price of himself for my sin and for your sin, to make us clean, like he made me clean that night. You've seen the empty tomb. We know where it is. Where God is no longer found because he has risen from the dead. For Emmanuel has come, and today we know that God is with us. Or do we forget? Like the people of Israel. The God who walked with them 40 years and that their clothes never wore out and fed them every day of man and quail. God who loved enough to say, I am with you. This God who cared enough to come and be with us physically. The greatest sign of all, God himself with us. Because Emmanuel will come again. This God will come again. So not only will he be with us, but that he will come so that you and I He will come and he will destroy those who have persecuted his people. He will destroy those who have ignored his word. He will destroy those who have turned their back on him. But to us, to 
to his people. He goes, so come. Come, my child. Come. Be with me now. Be with me forever. Be with me in joy and in peace. Come, be with me. So you find me at the temple. Praying, praying for Jerusalem, praying for the people of God. You find me praying because I am waiting. I am waiting for the day that Emmanuel will return. And then I too shall see him, along with every man that has ever lived on this earth. And all men and women will bow before him and say he is Lord. Pray for that day. Pray knowing that God is with us. I pray. We now take the collection of gifts. If you have any prayer requests, please uh, 